Are you feeling a little overwhelmed when looking for an LED bulb for your car? Well, today we're gonna to talk about the three things that I look for when looking for an LED bulb. So today we're gonna to be looking specifically at low beam, high beam, and fog light bulbs as those are a little bit different than the exterior bulbs on your car. Now the three things that I look for are gonna be one, cooling, two, chip density, and three, price. Because price is important, right? Why is cooling such a high up factor when you're looking at bulbs? Now, first off, LEDs, the biggest issue that I've seen with LEDs is gonna be heat or too much heat causing the LED to fail. Now, a lot of older LED bulbs, when the technology first started being more circulated, were a passive cooling system. If you look at the back of your bulb, you might see these big, large fans. They almost look like wings on the back of the bulb. Now, what that was supposed to do is wick away heat from the bulb in order to cool the LEDs. But over time, in prolonged use, that heat has more issues of trying to escape. And secondly, if the headlight is sealed up on the back or in your engine bay, it could have an issue expelling that heat. Now, a lot of cheaper bulbs, this is a brand new one that we bought, don't have any sort of cooling. This is a passive cooling system that doesn't have any fan. It just relies on this structure to release heat. Whereas a lot of higher end bulbs, you are going to see an integrated fan unit, whether it be directly on the back or inside the bulb itself. These ones here have a fan right on the back. And what those do is blow cool air along these veins here, similar to like a radiator and an intercooler in order to cool the chip. Other bulbs like the Morimoto two stroke actually have an internal fan. So what this does is it actually circulates air from one side of the bulb around to the other passing by the LED chips, as well as the circuitry inside the light. And what that does is not only help cool the bulb, but it also helps disperse the heat more evenly. So once again, the reason why it's so important to look at that cooling system is for longevity. You don't want to spend money on a bulb, even if it's 20 bucks, if it's not going to last that long. And from my personal experience as a professional, I would definitely look for something with an active cooling system. All right, next up is chip density. Now, those are two weird words to put together, but let me tell you why that's important. So these bulbs are designed designed to work in a halogen factory headlight. What that means is that these chips should replicate where the filament on a halogen bulb sits. The closer they are to that filament placement on each bulb, the better or more efficient the bulb is gonna be at expelling light onto the road. A lot of cheaper bulbs, the chips are actually gonna be more spread out in order to help fight that heat. And secondly, they're gonna be a lot thicker to fight that heat. But the further out they are or apart from each other, as well as the further space they are, are, the less they replicate a filament in a halogen bulb and the less effective they are in your headlight. Now, if you look at a lot of higher end bulbs, the chip density is really, really close together. On some of these, it actually looks like it's just one long LED when in actuality, it's four or six different LED chips. Secondly, if you look at the side profile of these, they're very close together. Once again, in order to replicate that filament in a halogen bulb. And the last one, the one that everyone loves to talk about on Facebook about how cheap they bought their bulbs for, but we don't really hear about the lasting effect of that is going to be price point. Now, I totally get it. I wouldn't spend hundreds or thousands of dollars on LEDs, right? When I see people buy these LED pods for like 1500 bucks, it's a bit mind boggling, even for me as a lighting enthusiast. As a professional. I definitely understand trying to get a good product at a good price. We have this bulb off Amazon that we got for 25 bucks for the pair. Overall, the fit, the finish, like I said, I do have some issues with a lot of the features we talked about with this, but the price is right, right? 25 bucks. The next up is gonna be our NHK Gold Series headlight. Now this does have have an active cooling system. It does have really great chip density with six LED chips on each side of this bulb. As far as the price point goes, 95 bucks is under a hundred bucks, pretty good. And on top of that, it is warranted. Great option for a great price. Now, next up is the SV4 bulb. Now this has very similar features to the NHK. There's an active cooling system on the back. It has three larger chips on each side. The only thing that I look at with this is it does have this extra connector that goes to the driver box. One thing I'd say is just take extra care in making sure this connection is fully seated we don't want any sort of water or moisture getting in there. It's a good option and offers great light output at a little bit higher price point. And then comes the big daddy. This is the Morimoto two stroke. So this comes in at 206. Now this has a bit different of a feature like we talked about before, which actually loops around the heat inside the light bulb. And what that's a benefit for besides cooling the bulb itself is also gonna be if you live in a cold weather climate, sometimes you'll notice there's snow or ice that builds up on the front lens of the headlight. Now LEDs do tend to run cooler than halogen or HID, 
And what this does is it helps circulate the heat inside the headlight to help melt some of that snow or ice away. This might be one that if you're looking to kind of ball out and live in a colder weather climate, this is a good option for those reasons. This has a three year warranty. It's a great performer. And if you're looking for an LED bulb, it is probably one of the top ones that we have available. So if you're considering one of these bulbs, besides this one, we offer all of these on our website, circuitdemon.com. If you're using a different bulb right now that you're very impressed with, I'd love to hear it below. Please comment that. If you've had great success with the cheap bulbs, I'd also love to hear that or any horror stories because who doesn't love a good fail? Thank you guys so much for checking these out. If you have any other questions or comments, please comment below. Thanks so much. See ya.